What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is an interesting one. Um, I get this question quite a bit, but also I get a lot of hate comments about it too online. Um, for example, if I post something of my car or reel or a picture or something like that, um, I get a lot of questions about how much parts cost or how much the car costs, but I also get a lot of comments about um, you know, just another spoiled rich kid or um, daddy bought him the car or he doesn't even own the car. But whatever comment it is, that brings up the topic of how much does drag racing cost? And I didn't make this video to call any of those people out or try to argue with any of the comments or anything like that. Um, that's not what the channel's about and that's not what I'm about. I mean, anybody who knows me personally or has been around the page since I've started this YouTube channel knows that I built you know, everything right here in my two car garage. So my goal and the whole point of why I started the Plan B Racing YouTube, Facebook and Instagram pages is to show from my perspective that the sport of drag racing can be enjoyed um, and participated in without having a, you know, unlimited amount of money. So I thought I would take this opportunity to show what it took and what it cost me to take my 1971 Chevy Nova from a rolling chassis into a 10 second race car. And for the most part, this car was built out of a catalog. There's not too many parts on the car that you can't find on Summit Racing or whatever. Like for example, I've kept every receipt since I've started to build the car. 90% of these are Summit receipts, but I kept everything that it took me to build the car. And I'm not gonna go into detail on every single part and what that cost, that would take forever. I can leave those for separate videos if you guys wanna see anything specific, but I basically took all the receipts, broke them down into an Excel sheet here by category, and then added those categories up and that's what we'll share with you today. So obviously you gotta start with the car. I found this car in January of 21 at a Salt Lake City and I bought it for $8,000. Um, I couldn't pass up this deal, it had a solid shell, um, the car came with weld wheels, a narrow 9 inch already with Moser axles, um, the cage was already inserted at 850, I had to do a few little um, tweaks and upgrades to the cage for it to get passed but um, it was still minor modifications, wheel wood brakes all the way around. So. I started with a very, very good rolling chassis. And I know costs have gone through the roof on just about everything, but there are still good deals available out there. For example, here's one that I found on Facebook Marketplace this morning. Um, so there are good shells and good uh, rolling chassis out there that you can find. Um, and I believe if you start with the right one, then it makes the whole process super easy or a lot easier. So there's not a lot that we've had to do with the chassis or suspension on the car. We did put new Viking shocks all the way around and any chassis modifications that we made have been made right here in the garage to get it to the pass the NHRA cert, but um, all that added up together is right around 1400 bucks that we have into the chassis and suspension work. Next thing we'll go into is the engine. Obviously that's the heart and soul of the build and that's typically what's gonna cost you the most money. Um, Kind of just going down the list here, I picked up a used small block Chevy, um, basically out of a junkyard for about 150 bucks. Um, I lucked out and it was a good block. It didn't have any cracks or anything like that in it. Had it machined, that was about 700 bucks. Um, but this total that we'll get to at the end here is including the supercharger and the carburetor that's sitting on top of it. Um, valve covers, alternator bracket, alternator, coil, camshaft, lifters, timing chain set, headers, rockers, fuel pump, um, push rods, dipstick, the whole rotating assembly, um, the heads and the water pump, ignition components, starter, motor mounts, all that. So basically every receipt that I had that had to deal with the motor and the parts in it um, ended up being about $11,700. Keep in mind as we go through all this stuff, there's no labor cost added into this. Besides the transmission, I did basically all of the labor right here in the garage, building the motor, um, everything with the chassis and all that kind of stuff. So there's no labor built into this. And I know everybody's build is going to be a little bit different. Parts are going to be different. So obviously this isn't a number that it's going to cost exactly this to build your car. So keep that in mind. Next, we'll move into the transmission and drivetrain. I picked up a used Turbo 400 for 200 bucks um, out of a truck and I took that to Ultimate Transmission here in Boise, Idaho. And I do have a deal through these guys. I used to work with them a lot and sent them a lot of work, so this number may be skewed a little bit compared to what you guys would see, but um, basically everything it took, labor, every, all that to build my Turbo 400 with the ProMod shifter, the converter, um, 
strange center section with new gears after I broke my center section that came in the car, the chromoly drive shaft, the SFI shields for the transmission and the flex plate. Um, I'm into the transmission and drivetrain right about five grand. And lastly, I put a miscellaneous category in here because that's all the little stuff that adds up to be a lot, um, including like your belts, your wiring, harnesses, your relays. Um, I've got ARP accessory bolts basically throughout the car, the gaskets for everything, the motor, um, tires, radiator, transmission cooler, the dual batteries in the trunk. Um, tools to actually build the motor, so like my piston um, ring compressor, piston ring filer, that kind of stuff, the dial board, basically all the accessories that come along with it, your gauges um, and the, you know, your fuel pressure and your oil pressure, that sort of thing. Um, all the receipts that I could find, and I even have receipts from like fittings and stuff like that, um, about 2,700 bucks. Over the course of two plus years, um, to go from idea of wanting to get into drag racing to finding a car to building the car and to get it into the tens um, cost me right about $28,000. We'll just round up and call it 30 just in case there's any receipts that I'm missing or something that I missed, but we'll just round up for an even number and call it 30 grand. Is that expensive and is that a lot of money? Absolutely. But is that a lot of money into comparison of other people's hobbies like, you know, overlanding or camping or you know, ATV, UTVs, it's really not. The fact is that most people are always gonna have some sort of hobby where they're spending money. And sure, to some of those people, they think that, oh my God, this guy spent 30 grand on a car. Okay, maybe car's not their things and they have, you know, close to the same amount of money into their UTV or their, their golf cart or something like that, you know what I mean? So my point is, if you're wanting to get into the sport of drag racing and you're willing to be patient and you're willing to learn and, and build things yourself and really take pride in that, that feeling of watching yourself create something and then take it to the track and seeing what it'll do, then you can get into the sport of drag racing at a reasonable cost. Do I have the fastest car in the world? No. Would I love to go faster? Yes, of course, we all want to. And that just comes with time. You know, parts break, you upgrade them, naturally the car ends up going faster. Um, and I'm not at the top level of racing as much as I would like to be and how fun that is to watch. Um, it's just not realistic for me at the moment. But is it possible to have a badass car for not a ton of money? I absolutely think it is. And that's the whole point of why I started this channel is to, to show from my perspective that it's possible and try to, you know, hopefully I can talk or inspire somebody to get into the sport and, uh, and give it a shot. I really appreciate you guys listening to see what I have into my build. I've been wanting to add up these receipts for a while to see what I'm truly into the car. And it's close to what I thought I was going to be. So I hope some of you out there watching hear that number and are like, man, you know, I think I could do that. And, um, you know, that stems into you spending time with your family or your kids or your dad in the garage building and creating something. And then you're out at the track on the weekends with your friends and family. Or whatever it is, I really appreciate you watching. If you're still here watching, I've never done a merch plug before, but I did get some shirts made. If you go over to our Facebook or Instagram pages, they're on there for 20 bucks. You can pick yourself up a PBR racing shirt. Everything helps, so go check those out. And as always, I really appreciate all of you subscribing, following along, and helping us build the channel. And until the next video, we'll catch you later.